In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Father, I ask your blessings upon this, this on us, because your word is already blessed, it's already true, and it already matters. And so, Father, we are privileged uh, to see what John sees in the, the great Isle of Patmos, and we know it has so many different layers, the first century layer with the Antichrist spirit of Nero, but so often now we need to know about the spirit of Antichrist so prevalent still in our world. Help us discern, help us to live in the power of the Holy Spirit that we won't be lost, that we'll be your sons and daughters alive in the Spirit. So, Lord, bless the hearing to us and, bless, and give us application grace through the intercession of Our Lady um, of the Lords. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, world Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, Amen. What we're going to see in, in the Bible, it, it, there is a circle coming around. When, if you want to describe the whole Bible, just do this. Make a circle. Because Abraham started here in a town called Ur. 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 The word Ur means fire. And if you follow the whole history of the Bible from Genesis, guess where, it, guess where the people of God wound up? Ur. Is it one circle? When you look at the beginning of the Bible in Exodus, we were plagued with the, the, the plagues. How many know we're seeing the plagues again? Have you noticed? When, you, when we read this section, 8, 9, what, guess what we're seeing? The identical plagues of Egypt are back. We just called Ireland a couple of days ago. And as you know, England is being racketed with the worst flooding in 250 years. They have never seen so much water. The Thames River, if any of you have been to London, is way over its banks. So you can swim in the Thames and not go near its banks. There's a person in Ireland who says, that vortex that hit us, they're telling the people in Ireland it went to them. It didn't bring snow and the cold, it brought tremendous pounding, and they're losing their, their, the, the shoreline completely in Ireland. About two weeks ago... England. No, Ireland. Ireland. This is the Irish side now, my, where my cousins live. <laughs> And there was a man that got up in their parliament and said, this is an act of God. He was laughed at. As soon as he was laughed at, two weeks after he said that, Ireland got extra pounded. <laughs> and these are our cousins, you know? Yeah, the land of the leprechauns. And, said, Pastor, so what do do? <laughs> and I think, I think what, what I want to say to you is, I don't think God's too, too thrilled. There is a sign of God that people don't want to hear about today. It's called anger. Now the Bible says his anger will last only but a moment. Isn't that good? But his mercy for uh, Psalm 136, his mercy endures forever. So we have two groups of people here. Last week we looked at the tribes of the Jews. Remember there's one tribe missing. Who is that? Dan. Dan. Because he really was a wild, wild man. So in his place we have Manasseh who was Joseph's, Joseph's, uh, Joseph's son, right? And it comes because Joseph gets blessed because he was so faithful to God. Then we have verses 9 down through 12. We have the Gentiles coming in. So who's coming in? The Jews and the Gentiles. Now, God's plan is that before, these, before the coming of the Lord, Deuteronomy 32 says that there's going to be Jews here to the end of time. I just read about the blood moons. And what I discovered in the 1967 war, anybody alive in 1967? Were you alive in 1967? I discovered something that the Jews were surrounded by 100,000 troops. There is no way mathematically they could have won. The Jewish people like Ben Gurion, you've heard of these names, and Moshe, uh, what was it? Moshe remember Meir? Remember all these people? Yeah, uh, remember and that? Uh, uh, we, 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 and Diane? Remember we, we heard about all those people? They would walk into the cities with a very few, and all of a sudden, the Egyptians and the Jordanians they just dropped their weapons. 
So what was happening was beyond miraculous. And during that time there were four moons, the blood moons. So very interesting. So we're, we're in that season, so I, I figured I had to read that. And I, now it, it piqued my interest again to read more about that. We're seeing the return of the plagues. We're hearing about diseases we've never heard about before. How many ever heard of Ebola and AIDS? You know, when Sister told me AIDS, that means help one another, right? <laughs> and uh, it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't a, a disease. So here's the plan of God. And is God's plan going to change? No. The first plan of God is to bring the Jews home. Anybody know any Jewish people? The first plan is the Jews because um, he made a covenant with them. And God can't break his covenant. Isn't that good news? The second part of that is that he's going to bring them to us Gentiles. Now, who's the first to hear the gospel? The Jews. By and large, they rejected it up until now. They're going to come in. Okay, good news? Now, St. Paul started in the, in, in the 50s, A.D. He started to get us in it. One of the first um, Gentiles was a man called Titus. And we have a book called Titus. So right now, Romans 11 says this is what's going to happen. The fullness of, of us, have, we have to hear it once. Every nation is going to hear about Jesus once. Isn't that great? Once. How many times have you heard about Jesus? Every day. And when, uh, 11, 23, 24, and 25, when the fullness is in, God will turn back to the, gen the, to the Jews with the power of the Holy Spirit, and it'll be their last time. Right now, 51% of the world has heard about Jesus once. If I were saying this about 5, 10 years ago, I would say we're only up at 32. But how many know since 5, 10 years ago, we have jumped 19%. And you know what one of the major tools God is using to bring people to salvation in Jesus Christ today? There's a film called The Jesus Film. So let's read that now and see. We, we have this, I told you last week, we have Palm Sunday in heaven. We all get the, remember that branch? was a branch called the Lulab. L-U-L-A-B. So let, let's find out what happens and then we're going to find a lull and then when we get into chapter 8 and 9 now, we're going to find Egypt is back. The enemy is back. So there's that circle again. Okay? Verse number 13. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and whence have they come? Now when you go to heaven, everybody know you're going to wear white. Why you, what does white mean? You're getting married. How many, how many want to get married? I know somebody said, Once is enough for me. Okay, now you're going to wear white, because the white is a sign of total, total cleansing, and we're cleansed, which we're going to find out right now, by the blood of Jesus. I'm upset with our faith in that we haven't emphasized with you the blood of Jesus. Um, not across the street. The Pentecostals down the road, they'll say we're saved by the blood of the Lamb. They're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. We have a whole month in July called the power of the blood. How many ever heard in July, it's a whole month of the blood? Do you ever hear about that preach? No. That's what I thought. When I become Pope, heads are going to roll. No. <laughs> Who are these? Underline there, clothed with white robes. So that's your marriage. You're all getting white robes, okay? Is that good news? You're all, getting, you're, you're all going to wear white. And then, then the Bible says there, whence have they come? Who are all these people coming in? Remember when we go to heaven, Lord willing, all of us here, every nation's going to be represented, every tribe's going to be represented, every language group is going to be represented, Chinese is going to be there. I don't know how God reads that stuff. And it's all going to be there. Okay? Every people group is going to be there. In my life, when, when uh, I became a priest, I thought I would only have to be with the German-Irish type. That's why family. But God, God made me laugh because I wasn't with the German-Irish group. I was with every kind of culture group, with Nigerians, with Hispanics, with... Um, um, Chinese with Filipinos so you should see the variety of dinners I have had and I looked at some of those meals and I said I don't know what the heck it is I better pray twice before I eat this <laughs> because it wasn't my, my meat and potatoes how many remember meat and potatoes now returning here to this wonderful parish I'm back so to speak with my particular family but on any occasion tomorrow night I'm going off and uh, um, I'll, I'll be shifting into the Spanish gear and they call me Padre Bilito. 
I said to him, Sir, Kurios, you know, he said, these are those who have come out of the Great Tribulation. Now, underline there the Great Tribulation. Now, the church teaches us, um, again, it's one of the signs of the five signs of the second coming of Jesus. Everybody know the five signs? There is called regular tribulation. How many know that was called getting up in the morning? How many know when it looks like and you see snow outside? How many know you tribulated? Oh. oh. And you're out shoveling and you go, oh my back, oh my back. I just say, Father Jeff, tell the boys to clean the parking lot on the right now. Okay? So I don't have to tribulate as much as you're tribulating. Now what's the great tribulation? Remember the church teaches, Matthew 24, there's going to be a great tribulation. And the great tribulation is, we don't want to be, it's all chaos breaks loose. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it's when the Holy Spirit is taken off the earth. How many would like to see that happen? Not me. not me. It's not good now with the Holy Spirit with us. And when the Holy Spirit is taken back, all chaos is going to break loose. So those what's, who are not with the Spirit. Right? Those who are not with the Spirit, right. So what's the great tribulation? The great tribulation is when there's chaos in our streets. Are you seeing it lit a little bit yet? Yeah. Many of you have shared with me what's going on in your house. That's tribulation. I mean, the chaos that's going on in your house is like, whoa. That's why I started two things. I started a Holy Spirit boutique for those who want to be married properly and wear dresses when they get married up to here. I mean, I want all the women wearing dresses up to here. Ladies, are you, do you agree with me? Okay, you would not wear it when you got married, those dresses they're putting there. So I'm starting a new Holy Spirit boutique. Okay, the, the, sec the second thing is I'm, I'm, I'm setting up caves. So, uh, so when, when, when you can't take it, we're all going into caves. So I have Holy Spirit boutiques for those who want to be properly married in the Lord. And secondly is we're going into caves. The Great Tribulation, then underline that. How do you say great in, in Greek? Mega. You ever hear that word before, mega? This is the Great Tribulation. Uh, uh, underline the next line there. They have washed their robes and made them in the, in the blood of the Lamb. So isn't it interesting that the blood of Jesus can cleanse us? One thing I learned, that blood does what? Stains. But one thing about the blood of Jesus, it cleanses. Now, anybody have interesting people you live with? You, you live with him. Okay? Day after day, week after week, month after month. Now, here's what I want you to do with your interesting kids. Okay? I want you to put the blood of Christ on them. Because when the blood of Christ is on them, Satan can't penetrate. Okay? Use the power of the blood in these days. The power of the blood that flowed from Jesus' side. When Jesus was scourged, whipped, and I had an interesting scene in the Holy Land, I saw again the very area that the, that the Romans punched his face when they blindfolded him. Then the Lord gave me, a, after they scourged him, then the Lord gave me in my mind's eye, I saw Jesus sitting in the corner, and then they placed the crown of thorns on his head. Then, then he got up and he took the cross on his shoulder and began a quarter mile walk to Calvary. I saw that in my mind's eye. And then I just saw the power of the blood over me. So, in these days, please get blood covered. Just say in your prayers, Lord, just cover me with the blood. Protect me. Even when I walk outside, because of all the ice skating that you got to do these days, I say, Lord, give me traveling mercy. Give me traveling mercies. Because once I fell here, I'm suing the church here. So, <laughs> so if you see me go float off on my yacht, it's because I just did So uh, we are made white in the blood of the Lamb. Now, here's the good news. Your whiteness can re be restored. Of course, if you want to use those strips on your teeth and, you know, Hollywood smiles, go ahead, use them. I'm glad you have a Hollywood smile on you. Now, Now, we get cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen? Amen. Now, when you look at the word Adam, how many ever saw Adam before? Here's, here's the word in Hebrew, Adama. Adama. Okay. Inside the Hebrew word for Adam is the word Dam. And the word Dam means blood. You see, when you study the Bible in Hebrew, you study the words inside and out. Now, inside the, inside the word for blood, the word in Hebrew for blood is Damin. And that, that's the word for S. So it, the word is bloods. It sounds like a, a group in Newark, New Jersey, the bloods and the crips. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the bloods is plural because it's the power of God. 
So here you have the, the bloods on you, the bloods of the Lamb. That's why the word Jerusalem is called Yerushalayim. The, it, it literally, how many of you ever say Jerusalem? Jerusalem. Do you know what you just said? Ever say Jerusalem? Jerusalem. You just said Jerusalem. You said two of them. One here and one to come. So when I do my study on heaven with you, if, you, if you're not coming, you've got to make sure you get the CDs. You're going to get good stuff. Good stuff all about heaven. And so now he comes in verse number um, 15. Therefore, before the throne of God, he serve him night and day within his temple. Now, when we go to heaven, everybody going to heaven? Yes. yes. By God's grace? Yes. yes. Okay, remember, not good people, but people who what? Know the Lord Jesus Christ. Live their faith. Are you all living your faith very well? Very well. Now, what's going to happen before the throne of God is all those who serve him. All who serve him, we're all going to be there. And if you want the last pew in a church, I want the first pew in heaven. I want to be in the orchestra seats. Amen? I already sent my RSVP in. I want orchestra seats. Now, I don't go to New York City a lot, but what I do, and, I, and someone goes to Broadway, I say, I'm going to spend a little money. I want better seats than the third deck, all the way in the back with my knees in my chin. I want, I want, I want where the music is. I want where the excitement is. Where, I want where Jesus is. So we're before the throne. Now, if you underline the word temple there, when we go to heaven, does everybody know heaven is a place? Now you're hearing crazy stuff today that it's some uh, psychological shift in your mind. Mm. Let me give you a Greek word. Donkey dust, hogwash. That's your Greek word. Heaven is a real place. God's going to be there in the throne. When God's in the throne, we're going to be focused in on the throne. The word for God on the throne is called El, E-L, El Yon. God, the Most High God. We're going to be right there with Him. Did you send in your RSVP? Inside Revelation 22, when we all go to heaven, there's going to, there's going to be the, the temple of God. And guess who the temple is? Jesus Himself. He's the temple. Remember He said in John chapter 2, destroy this temple and we'll raise it up. Now here's a shock. You, you're going to get shocked right now. Guess who the temple of uh, of God is. Can you believe it? It's right here. Oh, Lord, save us. Lord, save us. You are the temple of God. 1 Corinthians 3.16. Every one of you who are in grace right now, the temple of God is in you. You're all in grace. I know you are. You're all, you're all beautiful Catholic Christians. You have the grace of God in you. And so, I, I, you're all temples of the Holy Spirit. That's why when I walk through Newark, I went like this. <laughs> And I said, make my day. Make my day, please. And that's why, because I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit, that's why when I die, I don't want my ashes strewn over Middletown. Forget it. I want the box. I want the crying. And don't be cheap. Get me flowers if I predecease you. You better throw those flowers at me. All right? I want lots of crying. <coughs> I want the body preserved in the box. You'd be happy for you. Okay? I, 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 because this body, though it doesn't look good sometimes, <laughs> this body ha is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You, you know, doesn't it blow your mind that, how many know St. Paul, what do you think, how do you think St. Paul looked like? You think he had jet black hair? He was a hunk? You know what St. Paul looked like? He was about five foot six. He had a big forehead, a hook nose, bald, and bow leg. <coughs> Does that blow your mind of who St. Paul was? You know, every time I read him, I'm like, I wish I never found that out about you. <laughs> that's what he looked like. How do we know that? Because that's a second century description of what he looked like. I mean, that blows my mind. I, I wish I never read that about him. Because I, I, I have him in black, you know, black hair and, and mm -hmm. belting it out. And he did, he was a little, he was about this high, big hook nose. I mean, can you hear this little Paul dude? And, and, and I love what St. Peter said in his reading of St. Peter. I have no idea what he's saying. I said, well, welcome, welcome to the church today. We still try to figure out what he says. So verse 15, he who sits upon the throne will shelter them with his presence. So how many know we, we, we have God and when we go to heaven we're sheltered. Now what is the whole sentence shelter? How many ever heard, the Protestants use this word a lot, I, I don't think across the street, they got to be one of the penny constants. Uh, how many ever heard that? Shekinah glory. 
I, 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 you never heard that word Shekinah? No. There's two glories of God. One is the outside glory, and the other is the inside glory, called the Kabod. When Jesus was transfigured, he showed the disciples the soon second coming. That's called the Kabod. This is the only word that's in the Bible, Kabod. Shekinah is the outside glory. So now we're going to be protected by the outside glory of God. In fact, the Bible says in John 1.14 that he, 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 uh, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Do you know what that literally means when you say it tomorrow morning? It means that Jesus tented himself to us. He says, let me open the tent and you come on in. So we're sheltered by his presence. What does this sound like? It sounds like, uh, it sounds like a mother hen. Remember when Jesus cried over Jerusalem? When he cried over Jerusalem, he says, I'm, oh, you're my little chickadees out there. And I'm trying to gather you in like a mother hen. So there's the shelter of his presence. And so that's the Shekinah glory. I like the Pentecostals down the street. The Shekinah glory, the Shekinah. And so all of them are going, Amen, 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 Amen. I, 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 I get excited when they get excited. <coughs> and then when you're well, there, verse number 16, They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor the scorching heat. When Jesus says to us in the Sermon on the Mount, not the amount, but the Sermon on the Mount, when Jesus says in, in Matthew 5, 44, Jesus says there that the, uh, the sun scorches. I, I don't want to go to the Holy Land ever. And then there's troops going. There, there's, there's groups going. No way am I going to go. It's hot as the blazes there in June and July and May. I don't go there. The Pope's going in May. I am not going. I'll watch him on TV and wave to him. It's just so <laughs> hot. It's just so hot there. I just can't take it. My brain can't take it. The sun is scorching on good and evil. But the reason why we keep going is because of the good. So if you underline that, the sun shall not strike them. Verse 17, the Lord is in the midst of the throne of the shepherd. Everybody write there Psalm 23. How many of you ever heard, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Do you remember that? He will guide them to springs of living water. See, see, see Psalm 23? And so heaven is all already seen that we're going to get Psalm 23 fulfilled in our life. And it is a beautiful, it's a, the most popular psalm of the 150 we have. Now when you go to heaven... He will guide them to springs of living water. Underline the word living water. What's living water, everybody? Baptism. Yes. Sacramental, yes. Yes, very good. Because Jesus says in John chapter 4, verse 10, I wasn't thinking of that. Living water, it's got to keep doing what? Running. Remember the times in the summer we want a drink of water. I, I think all of us, uh, when we turn the faucet on and we put it toward cold, we let it run for a few moments. Because we, and we want to see it living. So it's got to be living. So when, when we go to heaven, how many know we're all going to get a uh, beachfront property? You're going to get, uh, you're gonna get your, 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 uh, your room. It, by the way, the Bible doesn't say mansions. As, how many know when you hear mansions, you think of the mansions? It's not a mansion. It's a room. Okay? Air conditioned. <laughs> not smoking. <laughs> and it, it's right off of the Father. Because we're all his kids, aren't we? How many know we're all getting rooms with the Father? Isn't that good? And some say, oh, when I get my mansion, I'm going to have the butler. You're not going to have the butler. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to write to you a book of every, what everybody says about heaven as I'm doing this heaven series. And the second thing I want to do is, I want to, every day I want to give you an epithet of what great, what some of the people put on their graves. I mean, this is really, it's really funny what people say. Really. I, I mean, you could do a comedy routine just on that. Now, every, God will wipe away every tear. How many know when you go to heaven there's no more crying? Okay, now, the last time we'll cry, how many know the last time you'll cry is? The last time we'll cry is, there's going to be a general resurrection. How many know, just review, everybody's going to die here, right? You don't want to be there when it happens, right? <laughs> now, we could be the generation not to die if Jesus were to come tonight. We're not going to die. We go. I, I, I vote for that. I, I vote for that, okay? Now the, and then we all are going to stand in front of God. It's called the general resurrection. John chapter 5. Everybody's going to be there. From ever. 
there's going to be a separation of the sheep and the goats. And God forbid, God forbid we turn and see one of our beloveds. They didn't make it. That's the last time you'll cry. Hopefully everybody here is saved by Christ and will cry like, but when you go into glory, you get your brand new body. How many need a brand new body right about now? <laughs> you get clothed in white, right? You go into glory, you get your room next to the Father. I don't know how he's going to do it with a couple million of us. <laughs> but we, we're with the Father, we're dressed in white. There'll be no more crying. Guess what? We won't remember them anymore. So I pray, and so what do we got to do? How many, how many want to pray for your beloveds to get, get ready to get to heaven? If that trumpet were to sound now, would they all go? And we have some, don't raise your hand. You have some beloveds who want to go? Yeah. They wouldn't be ready to, to see the Lord. So we got some praying to do. So every tear is going to be wiped away. No more crying. When the Lamb opened the seventh seal, uh, there was silence in heaven. Uh, about a uh, half hour. Now, if you underline that there, this is, this is what is called the silence before the storm. There's a snowstorm coming and starting at 9 o'clock. How many look out the window and see the flakes coming at 9 o'clock? <laughs> and by the way, they were late. They said it was coming at 9. It came at 10, 7. I said, they're an hour late. I said, okay, I looked up the heavens at 9 and I said, I don't see any flaking. I said, maybe it passed by. Good, good. It didn't. It came at 10, 07. And then it started and then it got miserable again. And so we can see that the Lamb opened the seventh seal. What does seven mean in the Bible? The, uh, the, the, the fullness. There was silence. So this is the silence before the storm. And then I saw the seven angels who stand before God. How many archangels are there? Seven. Now, when, when, the, when Jesus comes in the second coming, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 to 21, how many know there's going to be an archangel that's going to announce his coming? My question to us is, who is he? I always believed Gabriel because he announced the first coming. You know, he was working overtime that weekend. And then I, I, I said, maybe it could be Michael because he's always fighting for us. Does everybody know, review, there's three heavens? Everybody know that? Everybody know there's three heavens? Heaven number one are the clouds. Heaven number two is where the fighting is going on right now. Um, spiritual warfare. It's, it's a lot of spiritual. That's the way side of the Bible. Ephesians two. And how many know there's a third heaven? <coughs> Second Corinthians twelve. So there's three heavens. But when I found that out, I was like, really excited. So three heavens. The clouds you see is heaven one. Where's the fighting going on? Does everybody review? Does everybody know that Satan is not in, in hell yet? Does everybody know that? In Revelation 20, he's going to be thrown there. Because once you're in the cooker, baby, you're not coming out. So he's going to be thrown there, right? So what's, the, what's going to be the uh, second heaven? It's the spiritual fighting. In Ephesians 2, you can read Ephesians 2. When that's over, and that's why we call upon St. Michael. Anybody like St. Michael? Two of you, very good. Okay, I, I love St. Michael. So St. Michael, when that fighting is over... Then I believe that trumpet is going to sound the call <coughs> and Jesus comes. Okay? So who is that archangel? It says an archangel. Now how many archangels are there? Seven. To the Jews. Seven. And all the angels, by the way, end in the word E-L. Remind me, if you want all the angels that the Jews believe in, I'll give you all the angels. Okay? And so um, Catholics have the three archangels. Everybody remember what they are? Raphael, Gabriel, and Michael. Now, archangel means special assignment. Everybody in this room has an angel next to you right now. Do you know that? Matthew chapter 18, verse 7 to 10. But we're, gonna, we're going to see the fightings going on between Michael. And what does Michael mean? Does everybody know he's the guardian saint of Israel? Daniel chapter 12. So even the Jews have their guardian saints. Does everybody know who the saint of... Uh, uh, every, 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 every country has a patroness under Mary. Everybody know our, our patroness, right? Yeah. And so every, every uh, Israel has Michael, Daniel 12, as their guardian right now. Then I saw the seven angels who stand before the throne of God. Seven trumpets were given to them. Now, here we can see a close connection 
between the trumpets are going to be sounded. We have trumpets. We have seals. And we have bowls. So here we can see the three things, and they're, they're, they're all very similar, aren't they? Here's God coming, and he's going to say, I'm not going to allow man to continue in their sin, especially when I gave mankind the result, and the, the end of their sin is through the power of the cross. Have, have you as mankind, God says to us, have you appropriated my cross in your life? Have you sought forgiveness by getting your robes washed in the blood of the Lamb? Have you done that? <coughs> and what's your particular answer? I hope all of us will say, yes, Lord, I've done that. Amen? And so now, another angel came, and, and someone just asked me about the saints. Here they are. So they were, uh, and another angel came and stood at the altar. Now, what altar is that going to be? This is the the Jerusalem down here reflects the Jerusalem in heaven. I write too hard. Oh, they make you work here. Okay, now, when you go to everybody going to heaven by God's grace. Now, the, remember when we go to heaven, what are we going to see? A temple. Who's the temple? Jesus. Jesus. Now, outside, there's a reflection of the temple down here. Outside the temple, they, the Jewish people would have um, a big, gigantic basin where you would wash the animal. That was called the sea, S-E-A. So when they brought their animals in, you had to wash them. Then you would bring them up, they would, they would take them up a ramp, and then there would be a gigantic altar on the top and some fire coming out. What was that called? The Holocaust. <coughs> what was Jesus doing? How did Jesus get bathed in Mark 14? I mean, who bathed him? The woman with her tears. Do you remember that? In Mark 14. Isn't that a beautiful scene? So Jesus got bathed with her tears. And what was her tears? Jesus, forgive me my sins. So Jesus got... How many have ever seen the priest wash his hands? Now remember, even Our Lady had to do this with St. Joseph. They had to be bathed inside the, in, in, in Nazareth, which they really didn't point out the last time I was there last month. Our Lady and St. Joseph had to go through what is called a mikvah. You had to be spiritually cleansed when you go to the temple. Now you all grew up probably Saturday night baths. Everybody grew up with a Saturday night bath. <laughs> with the lye soap scrubbing behind your ears. <laughs> Anybody ever give your kids Saturday night baths? Do you remember those days? And of course, what did you do on Saturday? You went to confession. Remember confession? Anybody ever hear confession before? <laughs> you know, bless me, Father, you never heard about that. We'll teach you a lot of things here. And so we, 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 we did a mikvah every Saturday. And then usually Sunday you got your big dinner of the day. Remember that? I love Sunday dinner. Now it's McDonald's and French fries. Okay. Now, do you remember that? Henry, are you still getting some treats on Sunday from your bride? <laughs> Henry says, I know. Yeah. So, so that was the mikvah. And so what happens is, in the sea, they would cleanse the animal and then walk up. So what does John see? Outside the temple, the angels are gathering. The sacrifice has already been done. How many sacrifices are going to happen for us? No more. It's all called the cross, right? How many sacrifices? Jesus died once and once for all. So there's no, there's no more sacrifice for sin except the cross, right? So when we go to church every Sunday, we go, Jesus died once, once for all. The sacrifice of the cross is still so present to save us. So he sees this, and, and now you're going to like this. Uh, and what is he doing? If you underline there, verse 3. And he was given much incense. Anybody remember incense? Mm -hmm. So what do we see going up? We see the incense. Everybody know what incense does? And now, now we have it on a little string, right? You remember that? And there's the lid on the top, and then we put the coals down here. And then we put incense. Everybody know what incense means? The prayers are going up. So here comes the incense. Okay, now what are we praying for? Anybody praying? Now, let me tell you about your prayer. Okay, you're getting good stuff right now? I can't wait to hear this myself. When you pray... <laughs> It's the Holy Spirit praying through you. You know you pray when you're tired and you're falling asleep. Anybody ever do that before? 
when the Holy Spirit prays, you're always refreshed. And, and Romans chapter 8, verse 26, 27, 28, and 29. When you prefer, Spirit brings your prayers up, and it's like incense going in His presence. You're getting this. And with the power of the Holy Spirit, the incense going up, guess what happens to you? It's the prayers of, of, of all your groanings. This is called, in Catholic understanding, the intercessory prayer of the saints. So, that's why Catholics will say, you can ask Saint so-and-so to intercede for you. Anybody <coughs> ever do that before? Yes. Do they answer the prayer? No. They just help put the, the incense on the coals of your life. Do they answer the prayer? No. God does. But you ask them to intercede. So the incense going up is the prayer of the saints. Now, when you go into the presence of God, how many know no person can see God as He is? That's why we need new bodies. You know why we need new bodies? If this body saw God as He is, guess what would happen to my body? <laughs> I, I, I couldn't worship. I'd just go, collapse! Ooh, collapse, all right? My friend, Sister Breege McKenna, has heard God's audible voice. If we all heard God's audible voice, I like 3 o'clock in the morning for some time. What would you do? See that floor that your bed is on? You'd hide under it. <laughs> if it's a carpet, you'd go under it. If it's a floor, you go under the wood. So would say that? Okay? She heard God speak to her, um, you are going to do a healing ministry throughout the world. And she said very quickly to the Lord, you can keep it. She says, I realized it was God speaking to me. I did the fastest act of contrition in my life. <laughs> And then I was with Father Tom Forrest in uh, Montana. And Father Tom has had the privilege of having a lot of dinners and lunches with Pope John Paul II. And, uh, and also having dinner with Mother Teresa and Pope John. How many would know I'd like to have dinner with them? I'm still waiting for my invitation. And he said, Mother Teresa heard God's audible voice three times. It, it's telling me of the story like, really? Really, and I, I wanted. I had dinner alone with Father Tom because I said, "This man's going to be a canonized saint one day. I better sit with him now." You know, <laughs> and I did. I, in Montana, everybody was gone, and he and I are sitting in the. I think he treated me to dinner. I'm glad he did. So uh, <laughs> they heard the voice of God, and so when you when you see the incense go up, it's the intercession of the saints. It, it's what's going on down here. So we can see if you underline there, the smoke of the incense rose with the prayer. Oh, see that right there? Put a big star by verse 3, 4. The prayers of the saints. You see that? Who are the saints? Now, you hear me calling you saints. I hope you're not offended. I'm trying to build you up, really. Nowhere in the New Testament is saints mentioned in the singular. It's always saints. Now, what does saints mean in the Bible? It means believers in Jesus. I'm just using a, a biblical expression for you. Now, what, some of you say, I'm no saint. Now look, do you want to go to heaven? Yes, I do. In Hebrews chapter 12, it says, if you're not holy, you're not going to heaven, baby. There's another place. You want to go to the cooker? Go to the cooker. But saints is in the, in the New Testament is always used in the plural. You get, it? you get this? So if you circle the word saints, now here's, our, here's all of our prayers going up. You got that? Anybody have interesting kids? Now, did God hear your prayers? Yes. Now, sometimes say, I've been praying for this for 30 years. When did God first hear your prayer when you first prayed it? In Daniel chapter 10, as soon as you pray your prayer, it's already, it's already heard. Okay, isn't that good stuff? Now, your prayers and your praise go on with God forever. Did you know that? So don't get discouraged. Even if you prayed for 30 years, right? Even if you did the Monica, don't get discouraged. Your prayers have been heard. Did anybody ever really sing to God? You really meant it from your heart. How many know your praise goes on forever? How many know the Bible says God inhabits your praise? That's why I sing. You will like it. Sing. Uh, this weekend I'm putting hypodermic needles underneath the pews. You're gonna have to sing good. So when you sit down, it'll be painful at first, but you'll get up and sing. So underline verse, verse four, and the smoke of the incense rose with the prayers of the saints from the hand of the angel before God. Then the angel took the censer. Because some of these prayers, who do we see under the altar in Revelation 6? What's some of your prayers? 
All right, how many know some of your prayers? I can't stand this. Anybody ever have one of those prayers? I can't stand this. You're, you're normal, aren't you? you? You pray that prayer? How many ever prayed a prayer like, I really hurt? That person's driving me up a wall. So how many know that some of your prayers are going up? In this instance, is all your prayers. Do you think you all pray sweet-smelling prayers? Oh, no. <laughs> it's Bill. <laughs> How are you today, Lord? I'm not having such a good day in Little Town, Lord. You sent me here. I have no idea why. How many ever pray real sweet to God? No. You know what David prayed in the Psalms? You ever read the Psalms? Smite them, Lord. Knock out their eyeballs, Lord. Knock their teeth out. How many ever had a few of those moments? It's called driving. You ever have those moments? That's not tongues. That's anger. And reverse. So what the angels do is all our prayers, they're all going up. They're all going up. The prayers you pray for your beloveds. The prayers of discouragement. Anybody ever did discourage here before? It's called life. Right? Everything, all the prayers are going up. I can't take it! <coughs> Anybody ever prayed that prayer before? I know you did. I know you prayed that prayer. Okay? All those prayers are going up. And then what happens, is, this is really good, look at verse 5. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it on the earth. In, in other words, what did they pray in Revelation 6? What did, what did the martyrs say? God vindicate us. How many know we're all going to be vindicated? That's why I don't mess with me. But what do you mean? They want vengeance? No. I'm going to give my life for Christ. I'm being very badly treated. Now, should I go out and knock them out? The book of Romans says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So what is God going to do? God's going to deal with us. God is mine. That's right. Most so, here's my prayers going up. Revelation chapter 6. God, when are we going to do it? Back of chapter 1. How long? And he's going to take the censor bolt. You've got to answer to prayer now. And how many know, right now, the world and the Irish Parliament, two or three weeks ago, they are mocking God. How many know our Congress is mocking the living God? And let me tell you something. This weather is going to continue. Oh, March is coming. It's gone. The snow's gone. Wait until you see what we're getting next. Himicane. If it's a boy, it's a himicane. If it's a girl, it's a hurricane. You, you get this? I'm giving you a good. Uh, I'm giving you a good weatherology right now. Right? Are you getting this? So what's happening? The angels taking this. And, how many want? How many really want an answer to your prayers? All of them. They're coming. They're coming. All the answer to your prayer. Now, anybody have interesting people that don't go to church, don't know the Lord? I know you're here too. What do you pray? Lord, do what it takes to bring them to their knees. Protect them physically. Number two, if you're that desperate, say, Lord, I'm sending my angel to their angel. Knock them out, Lord. <laughs> Protect them physically. Come to their senses real soon. Okay? Because that, that it's going to be thrown down. Are you getting this? So don't anybody get discouraged. All those prayers, and you say, I can't believe I prayed those prayers. You, I saw you in the chapel. You prayed those prayers. Because when I left, when I came in, the room was shaking, and when I left, it was shaking all the more. <laughs> then the angel took the censer, filled it with the altar, threw it on the earth, and there appeals to thunder. Underline there, verse number five. Flashes of lightning, an earthquake. H how many know we're, we're on the verge of one of the greatest earthquakes ever hit humanity? More about that in chapter 11. How do we see lots of earthquakes? You can count on it. You can count on it. How do you say earthquake in Greek there? Seismos. Interesting word in Greek, isn't it? S-E-I-S, -E seismos, M-O-S, seismos. So now, if you underline there, loud noises, flash of lightning, and earthquake, this is called theophany. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, la -da, la -da, la -da, la -da, nobody threatened with a baby. What did you say for every baby? So cute. So cute. How many, are, how many spoke Italian to the baby? Gucci, Gucci. <laughs> Anybody speak Italian? Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. Gucci. Shabbats. 
There, oh, did, um, did you ever do that? How many ever spoke Italian to the baby? You know, you know, you know, you know all Italian speaks? When Jesus comes in the second coming, it's not a little baby. It's loud. It's loud, amen? So put in there theophany. When Mount Sinai came, remember Exodus chapter 19? How many know things were loud? No. When a theophany happens, you see things. Lightning. Seismos. Earthquakes. It, 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 it's, this is, epiphany is a showing. This is a, a, a big show. Okay? Now, in Exodus 19, 16, when the Bible says that the, the people heard the, these loudest noises, what do they say to Moses? Tell God to stop. He's scaring us. One day I was on a boat. A millionaire paid my way. That's a good thing. <laughs> and he said, Father Bill, my daughter is acting up. I said, stand by the door. I walked in. I said, Christina, that will be enough. And she sunk down, she was quiet. I said, there it worked. And then I got to sit next to her at dinner. <laughs> Uh, she's like one and a half, two, and then she's throwing, she's throwing peas. All, I, I just saw it. I'm sitting there on the boat, and I see these peas. Like, <laughs> I had green in between my uh, glasses. And, uh, I said, Christina, enough. I'm trying to have my steak and desserts coming, so behave. <laughs> so what did she say to her father in baby language? Daddy, tell him to stop. <laughs> and so when I call her up now and I talk to her, I all I hear, Mommy, is that Father Bill? No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> so here, here we can see the power of God. You can write in there Exodus 19, when God shows his power. When they're going up the mountain, they said, God, tell God to stop. Now the seven angels who had the seven trumpets made their ready to blow them. The first angel blew his trumpet uh, how do you say trumpet in, in Hebrew, everybody? Shofar. Everybody remember what a shofar is? It's a ram's horn. Who, who's the first ram in the Bible? Do, 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 do. Time's up. How do you say ram in Hebrew? Ayil. Very good. Remember what Abraham was walking um, Isaac up on the third day? Interesting language. Third day. And he didn't shish kebab. Remember his son? And what did, he, what did they do? They found in the bush a ram... And Ayil, and what did they do? They killed the ram and took off its horns and made a shofar. So every time you see the shofar, it's a ram's horn. So notice it doesn't say, see, now, if you were to read that in English, what would you think the trumpet meant? You would sing like, <laughs> No. Anybody ever think it was one of them? Okay, you thought it was, but no. <laughs> you think they're down Louisiana doing the blues. It's the end of the world. Goodbye. So, so put in there, the seven angels, the messengers of God, get the shofar going. So when Gabriel blows it, he's taking up a shofar. Interesting, isn't it? You're the only ones on your block that know this. Then the first angel blew his trumpet and followed hail and fire. Now, what, is, what does that sound like? Egypt. How many plagues were there? Ten. Now, watch this. You're getting good stuff. How many you're getting good stuff? I'm going to raise my head right too hard. Ten plagues, right? Why were there ten plagues? Ten gods. Ten plagues. Every time you see a plague on humanity, it's because we have another God in our midst. And what's God doing? Knocking it down. What was the first plague? Do you remember? In Exodus? The river turned to what? Blood. Now remember the Nile River is the only river in the world that goes the other direction. Everybody know that? Right. And by the way, you're the only ones on your block that know this. The word Nile never appears in the Bible. It's called the river. The river. It doesn't say Nile in Hebrew. It's called the 
Yeor. The Yeor. And so now we have, now watch this. As the plagues in, get more, what's it the sign of? God's coming. This winter, just a few days ago, 49 states in the United States had snow on the ground. 49. I think the only one was Honolulu. Florida. 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 Honolulu has snow on the mountains. Yeah, in the mountains. On the mountains. So, every plague is against a god. Well, why ten? Ten means, that's a good question. Ten means the trials of your life. How many, how, many, how many times was Abraham tested? Ten times. How many commandments are there? Ten. How many know we got to obey all ten? I remember the first times uh, as a brand new priest, when they said, all right, you've got to hear confessions. I'm like, I do. How do I do that? And the people came in and said, Father, I did it all. Just give me absolution. You name it, I did it. Anybody want an easy confession? Just do that. I did it all. I did it all. <laughs> Brother Dominic's getting ready to make his first confession, so he's going to go and did it all. You name it, did it. And you know what I had to do? He admitted doing everything. Because James says you break one, you break them what? So ten, ten means trials and temptations. Ten means getting through the test. It means the test. In today's gospel, the Pharisees were trying to test Jesus. What were they? What were they doing to see if he obeyed the Ten Commandments? And that's why he went, "Oh, oh!" He sighed. Right? If Jesus sighed, run, run. Okay, run. An interesting sign of Jesus. In Mark's gospel, they get the emotions coming out. So we can see there the first angel blew, mixed with blood. Okay, everybody see the, the first plague there. Now, when the plagues started, what happened with the plagues? It increased in intensity. So, as we're going on, now, do we always have these problems here on earth prior to reading this? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do we always have floods? Yes. Do we always have earthquakes? Yes. Do we always have famine? Yes, 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 yes. <coughs> right down the line. Do we always have death? Yes, 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 yes. What's the difference? It's never been this intense before. In the book of Exodus, it got intense to what? What's, what's going to be the ultimate to wake us up? Death. But how much death are we going to have to see? Lots of it. Because have we been convinced? Remember 9 11? <coughs> Remember that church upstairs was packed? <laughs> I mean, in a week they're all, they're all out again. They're not convinced that we need God. No. We're getting worse. So, and the third of the earth was burnt up. That's a lot of people. That's a good section. John uses fractions saying this is a lot. And a third of the trees was burnt up. What, what's trees mean? It means life. It means breathing. And all the green grass was burnt up. Then the second angel, verse number... Um, Verse number 8. The second angel blew his trumpet in something like a great mountain burning with fire. Does that sound familiar? Was thrown into the sea. Uh, now, does everybody remember what sea means? In Hebrew, the word sea would be yam. <coughs> now, Jesus gave a very <coughs> scary scenario once. Here's what he says. If you people keep living scandalous lives... It's better if you have what? A millstone around your neck and thrown into the sea. Mm -hmm. What did he mean by that? When you go into the sea, anybody ever go to the Atlantic down here? I mean, that's a scary drink. You don't know what's going to get you. You know, I grew up, believe it or not, around the Kingsburg area. You don't know that about my life. I went into the pool there. What an interesting pool that was. You remember the pool in Kingsburg? And then we walk along the little beach there. And they had little man-of-war shells, all these. And we, kids being kids, we play with them. 
right across from the pool was the, the empty parking lot. And that's where my aunt lived. So I've been in Kingsburg about a million times, probably before some of you were even born, I've been in this town. <coughs> and then here I am again, what goes around comes around, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, I, 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 just, I just saw, I was the sea, and when you, you wouldn't want to go in there because you don't know what's going to be in there, it's scary. So now what's being thrown into the sea? So when Jesus gave that image, they were scared. If you live a scandalous life and you're thrown into the sea, because you're going down into darkness. You're going into murkiness. You don't know what creatures are going to nip you. That's why I like pools. <laughs> I like to see my toes. <laughs> because when you're in the Atlantic, your toes disappear. I like the Caribbean waters because it's so clear. And it's so hot. But I like to see my toes. And if I'm losing weight, I can really see my toes more. <laughs> so, so you can see here that verse number, this, this, this is blue and it sounds like a great mountain burning with fire. What does that sound like, mountain burning with fire? Volcanoes. Was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. So it continues. And how many know right now in, in the world is what is called this, the, the, the red tide? That's literally happening in our seas. We're on an irreversible course of destruction just in the whole world of ecology. Did you know that? Did you know every single day a new, another species is never to come back? So, Holy, Holy Spirit, help us. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. So we, we can see that we're not, life is not going to be usual. The third angel, verse, verse number 10, blew his trumpet. And a great star fell from heaven. How many have just seen a great star last year? How do you say great in, in Hebrew again, in Greek? Mega. Now, what does this mean? Does everybody remember last, was it last year this month? There was a star that fell in Russia? Yeah. They didn't know where it was going to fall. Right? They didn't know where it was going to fall. Okay, right in Russia. Now, here's what that means. When you read, read the prophet Joel... <coughs> When you read what happened in Acts, when you read Isaiah, these three men say the blood is going to be the the moon's going to be turned to blood, the sun will lose its light. What does that mean? So incredible what we're doing down here. The whole cosmos has to react to what we're doing. Here's what it means. It means that we're not going to have life as we know it. I'm not a prophet or a son of a prophet, but can I tell you something behind the scenes? Prepare for a different lifestyle. You're not going to have what you've been having. Do you have faith in Jesus? Are you living it? It's not going to be a business as usual soon. It could be a hundred years from now this is going to happen, but there's going to be a big change. I talked to my friend, the rabbi. He's an Orthodox rabbi. He says, we can't go on like this. I just talked to Father Bill Kesey from EWTN, mm -hmm. the Fathers of Mercy. Mm -hmm. He and I were concurring and said, we can't go on like this much longer. Father Bill Casey said to me and I said, I agree with you. Great name he has too. <laughs> he says, something big is coming soon. I said, Father Bill, I fully agree with you. And I'm just telling people, you get ready. Live your faith very, very well. That's going to sustain us, right? And guess what? You are going to be the people, and you are the people, who are going to bring people into the kingdom. So he says there, a great star fell from heaven, blazing like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the fountain of water. And the name of the star is Wormwood. Of course, we just had that thing called Chernobyl. Remember Chernobyl? So we're going to see, because we are destroying our own place, mankind is, is, is destroying ourselves. A third of the waters became wormwood, and many men died of the water because it was made better. How many know a lot of people don't have any drinking water? An interesting phenomenon is happening right now in the Holy Land. They're running out of water. As down by the Dead Sea. And of course you see these guys with big Buddha bellies floating. They put all this black tar over them to get rid of their arthritis. Scary sight. And they told us, we were driving on a road, they were saying to us, in the Lord Jesus' day, this road would have been the Dead Sea underwater. And guess what happened? Receded, 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 
receded, receded, receded. The, the Holy Land is losing water. Oh, yeah, the Dead Sea is so the, dead sea, the Dead Sea is shrinking. Yeah. Why? Yeah. A, a big reason is because Israel and Jordan signed a pact, and Jordan is using the water too. When you have two countries sharing water, it's going. Mm -hmm. And they don't get a lot of water, do they? One good thing about all the snow is at least we're going to have something to drink for a little bit, right? <laughs> so that's a good thing. I like water. This so what does wormwood mean? Wormwood? It, it means absolute destruction. Mm. It means, I, I mean, it, it, did you ever look at a glass of water and it just looked like... Mm. Here's how I describe it to you. It's swamp water. Mm -hmm. You ever go by a swamp mm -hmm. and you see the dragonflies over it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can have the smell coming out? That's a sense of wormwood. Would you like a good drink of that? Mm. Mm. No. We need the Holy Spirit to help us set up oasises. And by the way, the most famous oasis was probably called the place called En Gedi, where David was hiding in the caves, and Saul was in there and wanted to, an opportunity to kill him. The fourth angel blew his trumpet, and the third of the sun was struck. And again, you know, nobody's going to strike the sun, but what does that mean? I mean, we're going to see, um, it means a new age is coming. How many know a lot of people are being burnt up with the sun right now? Trying to get your tan. Forget it, you all look great now. So what's the sun going to do? It's, it's not going to give us what we wanted. It's, it's going to be a source of what? Destruction. What did we just read in Matthew 5, 44? What did we just read in um, chapter 7, verse, um, verse 16? The scorching heat. I can't take heat. I mean, if I was in Florida, I'd be inside all day in the air condition. <laughs> Uh, this beautiful Irish skin. <laughs> but we're, we're, we'll see that the, the sun, the, the cosmos have to, uh, is reaction to the way we are. Now remember when the Lord Jesus was born? M remember we saw the, the cosmos reacting? The Savior of the world. The angels came down. Remember when Jesus was resurrected? The angels came down. Remember when Jesus ascended? The angels helped take him up. And how many know in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, when Jesus comes, the angels are going to be there? Does anybody know when we see the second coming, there's angels coming? Because He is the what? He is the mercy of God. Redeeming, and by the way, when He comes, there's going to be no more people being redeemed. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27 28, the second coming is only for those of us who want Him to come. And so we, we're going to see that. And so, and the third of the moon, and the third of the stars, so again, you, you can write in there a cosmos shaking of what's going to be happening. This is, the third of their, their light was darkened. A third of the day was kept from shining. And many evangelicals have described this as, you know, clouds and eclipses and, and everything else. The Catholic Church doesn't take that particular stance on this. It would just say a new era, but things are not going to, what does this mean? Things are not going to be the same. There, there's so many signs. But I don't know the day of the hour. It could happen a thousand years from now. If I tell you the day of the hour, would you do me a favor? Get out of here. I've lost my mind. <laughs> Nobody knows the day or the hour. Amen? Amen. So, uh, underline, the third of the day was kept from shining. A third of, of the night. When I looked and I heard an eagle. Uh, now, if you serve the word eagle, that's an interesting term. Because eagle was a sign of, of the Roman government. Remember, there's many layers in here. And in John's Gospel, John uses the, uh, a very high, lofty view. Now watch what he says here, something very interesting. In, in, uh, I looked, I heard an eagle with a loud voice as it flew in mid-heaven. Hello, mid-heaven. Now, if we put this whole room together, and mid-heaven would be right about here, right? Why would I want to be in mid-heaven? Because if, if, I, if the eagle is all the way down there, what would you have to do? Over here, what would you do with the eagles over, over here? You have to... You wouldn't see it as, as good as they see it, right? So what if I put the, what was the eagle over here? You wouldn't see it as good. So what am I going to do? Why do I put it up here? So you can all kind of see it. So what does this mean, mid-heaven? There, there's no geographical place called mid-heaven. So if you circle mid-heaven, it means everybody's going to see it. 
the eagle was a sign of the Roman power. Remember, there's many layers to the book of Revelation. And what, what kind of power is trying to get into the church? The government, right? How many are right now the UN is mercilessly attacking the Catholic Church? I will never give to UNICEF or UN, whatever they call this thing yeah. ever in my life. Amen. When I, I, I preached in the UN for about five, six years. And they said to me, want to give to the UN when I walked through? I said, no way. Mm -hmm. You stop promoting abortions and I'll think about it. Mm -hmm. They looked at me and they walked away very quickly. Yeah. I said, I'm pro-life. I mean, no, I, I didn't get a Christmas card from them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's flew me in heaven, and, and whoa, whoa, whoa! And I asked my Jewish guide again, because I was in Capernaum, where Jesus started his ministry. And I said to him, and of course I knew the answer, but I forgot I knew the answer. I said, when Jesus in Matthew 11 talked to those two cities, how did he say, whoa? He said, Oi! <laughs> so, I said, that's it. I said, remember, what, you know, when you leave Brooklyn, New York, Oi! 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 I said, of course. So, if you're running right in there, Oi! 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 I'm going to tell you how we get the birth of Woe. I know our time is just about up. Isn't this good stuff? Yeah. Oi, 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 oi. So, if you say, oi, oi, but I, I like, I, I always say, Senor, I like this Spanish rendition. You know how they say, whoa? Ay, de ustedes. Ay. Ay. A-Y. De, D-E, ustedes, you. Ay, de ustedes. I like it better in Spanish than in English. We just say, whoa. They go, ay. And in Hebrew, oi, 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 oi. So when Jesus was saying to them in Aramaic, Oi, 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 oi. Now, let me tell you how the oi's come up here. Aren't you getting good stuff? I never knew, you know, where the oi's came from. <laughs> what did Father Bill teach you? Put the oi, 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 oi. <laughs> in the book of Deuteronomy, there are two mountain ranges. Ebal and Gebazim. There were, mountains represented two things, blessing and curses. Those who follow God, you'll be blessed. One of the first words of Jesus, blessed are the poor in spirit. Matthew 5. What are the last words of Jesus? Matthew 23. Oi! Do you see his own ministry? Between... Blessings and curses. Jesus began by, by saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. There's is the kingdom of God. And then, who did he talk to in the end? Religious people. You know who, who had, Jesus had the most problems with? Religion. You know who he'd have the most problems with today? The most problems Jesus would have? Clergy. Mm -hmm. You know why? They went to seminary. You know why? They think they know it all. So when you come up to them with your little faith, they go, ha, ha, ha. You want to do your extra prayers, they go, ha, ha, ha. And you've seen it. And you're smart, you know. That man just put me down. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Oh. And they, they don't say anything, but you can just kind of sense that. Could you do me a favor? Keep away from them. If they don't welcome you in your spirituality, which is good and holy, you don't need a man who claims to be spiritual leading you anymore. If they want to cut your spirituality and how you pray, you run away from those priests. Jesus had the most problem. You know what he said to them? Oi! And guess what it happens? In Matthew 11, those two cities don't exist today. They don't exist. Because they didn't know the time, Luke chapter 19, their visitation. So Deuteronomy 27, Deuteronomy 28, blessings and curses. 
Jesus' ministry begins with blessing, ends with what? Curses. And it's us. Us. And that's why it's believed by Our Lady of Akita, Japan. Heaven is paved with clergy. When they asked the visionaries at Medjugorje, why don't you become nuns and priests? They said, no. You know what they said? In essence, we don't want to go to hell. Because my life has got to be so, as an example to the people, and preaching the truth. You better preach the truth crystal clear because you don't want to lead one little one astray, right? You better be loving to everybody. How many of that's hard to do every single day? You see the same people and you go, Hello? <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Jones. Oh, yeah, that's nice, Mrs. Jones. And inside you're going, oh. So that's why they want to be priests and nuns. They couldn't do that. They, were con they said they weren't converted enough. Are you getting this? Ay, ay, oi, 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 to those who dwell on the earth. At the blast of the other trumpets, which three angels are about to blow. And the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star falling from heaven on earth. And this is the key of the shaft of the bottomless pit now. Who's the star that fell, everybody? Lucifer. How many ever heard of the SS before? Remember what Jesus said? Let me show you. How many are you getting good stuff right now? Well, let, let's go to two passages real quick before we close. I just want to show you these. Go to Luke chapter 10. This is good stuff, isn't it? Luke chapter 10, please. I want to show you the whoa, 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 whoa. Right there. Look at, verse, look at verse 13. Remember we had a governor called Chorazai? <laughs> I'm only kidding. Okay, underline, underline verse 13. Woe to you, Chorazai. Woe to you, Bethsaida. You see the woe is coming? Now, it, for the mighty works, the mighty works is kratos. Now, the mighty works were unbelievable acts of God. Unbelievable power of God shown. If they'd be done in Tyre and Sidon, how many ever heard of Tyre and Sidon? That's where Jesus met the woman who had a demonized daughter. How many ever heard of the woman who wanted to kill Elijah called Jezebel? That's where she's from. I call it witchy poo bill. <laughs> it was a demonic... If I was living in Israel, I would not want to be entire inside. Not where demonic activity took place. They would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes, but it shall be tolerable in the judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? What happened? I just was in Capernaum. Guess how many people live there? Nobody. Just a little monastery with a Franciscan. I hope the Holy Spirit's not saying to him, Woe to you, Franciscan monk. <laughs> I had mass in Peter's house just excavated. Ran out of town as soon as possible. Yeah? And you, Capernaum, you shall be exalted, and you shall be brought down to Hades. Hades is a place of the lower world. He who hears you hears me, he who rejects you rejects me, and he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The seventy return with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Underline verse 18. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. See that lightning coming down? Now, does everybody remember what happened, how he fell? Does everybody remember, we're going to read in Revelation chapter 12. Does everybody remember when God sent Michael out? Does everybody remember there was a fight in heaven? How did he fall? Like lightning. What happens with lightning? That's how quick Satan got out. Okay, so if you're underlining that there. What does the word Satan in Hebrew mean? Your adversary. How quickly did he leave heaven? Gone. Like lightning. 
Okay, well, let me show you another passage as we're just giving you the background to the beginning of chapter 9 here. Let me show you the five eyes of Satan. And you, you know, you've heard about it a million times. The word in the Bible for morning star is Lucifer. Now, believe it or not, that word is originally what a good word. But please don't name your kids that. I was in Homosassus, Florida with friends. And I saw the biggest crocodile, you know, about from here down to whatever, the wall. And you know what his name was? Lucifer. I just went. And then they bring a chicken on a string. And they just show you how this thing just went up and went. It, it, it was a dead chicken, you know. You know. It, 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 it was like it was like Frank Perdue's special. They like live. And this this was they. It was a Frank Perdue special or something. It was it was a go go go. And so and then they just showed us all these things and and so it, and Homo Sassus, we just saw this thing go. Reach up and whoa. And I went, whoa. Yeah. Now go with me to Isaiah. Let me let me show you if you haven't been there before. Isaiah fourteen. Now this is the fall evil one. Everybody know that? Who wrote Isaiah? Uh, very small. Now, I want you to underline these um, verse 12, 13, and 14. <coughs> Isaiah chapter 14. This is the full of seat. Are you learning anything new tonight? I like preaching the first Sunday of Lent. I really get into it. <laughs> Everybody with me? No. <laughs> Isaiah 14. <laughs> 12 to 14. <laughs> We're in chapter 9 of Revelation, which we'll continue with really next time. How you have fallen from heaven! <laughs> chapter 14, verse 12. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Chapter 14 of Isaiah, verse 12, 13 and 14. This is the fall of Satan. After what book? Okay. Everybody with me? Yes. Now, I want you to notice something. The five eyes of Satan. Now, in the original background to this, it represented the kings of Tyre and Sidon. But the church has applied it to the power of Satan, too. If you want the original context of Isaiah 14. But now we use this as the fall of Satan. So when usually... When Lent starts, and the first Sunday of Lent, I usually preach on the power of the evil one. But the power of the Holy Spirit is greater. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. To remind the people there is a real devil. And he's not a little dude with a pitchfork and a pajama suit. <laughs> Ready? I, I just, and please notice the eyes. The eyes of Satan. So your homework is, tell me what the eyes of evil are. And don't be like the crazy Pentecostals. I just want to take the devil out of here. <laughs> you know, you're feeding into him. We don't want him near here, do we? So, um, they get a little kooky on the devil. But we've gone to the other extreme where we don't mention him anymore because we don't think he exists anymore. Pope Paul VI reminds us, there's smoke in the sanctuary of God, of the evil one. And if, if, if you follow Francis like I do, even last week, Satan is being mentioned by him all the time. Have you noticed? Yeah. I never heard of, or, or, in all my life, a pope that mentions the devil like he is. Hmm. How you have fallen from heaven, O day star. Now, how do you say day star? Right in there are the word Lucifer. <laughs> say where we get the word Lucifer from? <laughs> now, at the end of time, when we get to Revelation 22, what are we going to see? We're going to see the... The, the, the morning star. So what does Satan have to do? Camouflage himself and say, I'm the morning star. How you are cut down to the ground. What happened to him on the ground? Does everybody know why he's snake-like? Because we believe he was a seraphim angel, Isaiah 6. He had six wings. He fell like lightning. We just saw that, right? And then, guess what? He becomes snake-like. That's why we, we, we take the devil and associate it with a snake. Mm -hmm. And Eve didn't get the clue. If there's a snake talking to you, there's something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Okay. Can you can you, re- can you remember that? I, I always bless Father Carlos. I said, if anybody in our church is talking to snakes or talking to them, I'm sending them all to you. He says, no, 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 no. <laughs> if Lucifer has six wings, uh, does that have anything to do with the number six, six, six? Yes. Yes, it does. More about that in chapter 13. This is interesting stuff. You have, you have said in your heart, verse 13, I will ascend, there's I never went to heaven, above the stars of God. Now, when you circle the word stars of God, it can also mean they're angels. I will set my throne on high. Can you hear him saying this? I will sit on the mount of assembly in the far north. So, when I do my heaven series, what's the best definition of where heaven is? It's always north. You gotta get the. You gotta get. If you can't come, you got. You gotta get this. Even if you're in Spain, you gotta hear this stuff. Uh, you're gonna go two weeks. You go to Spain. You're gonna miss good stuff. I was watch it on YouTube. All right. I will sit on the Mount of Assembly in the far north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. How do you say the Most High? El El Yon. Never heard you that word before. El El Yon. That's just the background for us understanding the next verse next week in chapter 9. Well, what did it say again? Did you do anything new tonight? Yeah. Was it worth getting up today? Yeah. <laughs> just repeat what I just read for you. We gave you the background now from what the Lord Jesus says. And the fifth angel blew his trumpet and I saw a star falling from heaven to earth. And he was given the key of the shaft of the bottomless pit. Are there layers of hell? Yes. Are there layers of heaven? Yes. How do we know that? Stay tuned next week. So, what is chapter 9? What is the he? It's already Satan. What does Satan mean? Adversary. What are all the names of Satan? Find out. You want to know all the names of the evil one? No. No. All right. She's scared. <laughs> all right. They voted for this book. I didn't vote for it. Uh-huh. I voted against it. All right. The Corinthians is coming. They do Corinthians. Okay. And I, should I rush through this? I get the Corinthians? No, they want to absorb it. All right. Good stuff? You cheated. You told me. Yeah. Did you anything new? Did you anything new? Did you learn one good new point? No? Well, something that was nice. Did you learn one thing that nice for Danielle? Yeah. All right. She would have been scared tonight. You know, you're married to interesting people. You picked them. You're, you're set. Okay. The Muppets are coming in on Wednesday. Uh, so, uh, the Muppets. They're coming in to see the kids on Wednesday. If you want to go to Sight and Sound, April 24th, start calling Diana, um, and we'll, we'll get you on a seat. If you, if you want to go to Israel next year or, or, or thereafter, whatever, if you need more time, we'll, 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 we'll give you some more time to get uh, our funds ready. When are you planning on uh, Right now we're talking about like early February next year. Mm-hmm. Just to, uh, I, I need to see that place again. And, just so and what, 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 what I want to do is I want our own tour, um, maximum two buses, because it's just too crowded with too many people. And I want to take you on it, show you things, and, and, and really make the Bible extra come alive in your life. And I want to tell you things, and we're going to be doing Bible studies, unbelievable. We're going to do Bible studies on the spots, and then at, in the hotel at night, we'll do more Bible study and, and get your reaction and everything. So it's going to be, and on, it's going to be, it's going to be the trip of your life. Uh, if you need to sell apples on the corner, do it. If you need to sell your car, do it. You know. So, it, uh, let's come before the Lord. I hope everybody has a living relationship with Jesus here. Amen. Uh, and another announcement, I'm doing a healing mass in Holy Cross in Rumson next Tuesday night. You're all invited to come, okay? I, I, I see Jesus healing great, great, his power. His, I want to see his Kratos power. So please come next Tuesday on the 25th of February. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Father, thank you for the word and thank you for the encouragement that um, when these angels are blowing their shofars, 
we're going to be on your side. We are men and women who love you. We love the truth. We love knowing Jesus as the way, truth, and life. Bless this word, Lord. And may it bear fruit to all of eternity. May it be a word, Lord, that we are ready for the coming of the Lord in our midst. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great time in Spain. <laughs> Those two lovers are going to Spain.